for the entrance scene. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. My dear friends, today in the Gospel, Jesus invites us to forgive, not just once or twice, but 77 times, to go beyond ourselves to accept the person. And so for the times that we find difficulty to forgive, the persons that they have faulted us, for times that we find difficulty in forgiving God, for times that we have not really gone all out to forgive the person completely for this and for all the sins that we have committed. Let us be truly sorry for our sins, acknowledging them, and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask Blessed Mary, a virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Glory to God in the highest. And on, and on earth, earth peace, peace to people of good will. We, we praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, God Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us, you take away the sins of the world, Receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ. With the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. Look upon us, O God creator and ruler of all things, and that we may feel the working of your mercy. Grant that we may serve you with all our heart. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, for ever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Ecclesiasticus. Resentment and anger, these are foul things, and both are found with the sinner. He who exacts vengeance will experience the vengeance of the Lord, who keeps strict account of sin. Forgive your neighbors the hurt he does you, 
And when you pray, your sins will be forgiven. If a man nurses anger against another, can he then demand compassion from the Lord? Showing no pity for a man like himself, can he then plead for his own sins? Mere creature of flesh, he cherishes resentment. Who will forgive him his sins? Remember the last things and stop hating. Remember dissolution and death and live by the commandments. Remember the commandments and do not bear your neighbor ill meal. Remember the covenants of the Most High and overlook the offense. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. The life and death of each of us has its influence on others. If we live, we live for the Lord, and if we die, we die for the Lord, so that alive or dead, we belong to the Lord. This explains why Christ both died and came to life. It was so that he might be Lord, both of the dead and of the living. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. message of eternal life. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, o Lord. Peter went up to Jesus and said, Lord, how often must I forgive my brother if he wrongs me? As often as seven times? Jesus answered, Not seven, I tell you, but seventy seven times. And so the kingdom of heaven may be compared to a king who decided to settle his accounts with his servants. When the reckoning began, they brought him a man who owed 10,000 talents, but he had no means of paying. So his master gave orders that he should be sold, together with his wife and children and all his possessions, to meet the debt. At this, the servant threw himself down at his master's feet. Give me time, he said, and I will pay the whole sum. And the servant's master felt so sorry for him that he let him go and cancel the debt. But as now as this servant went out, he happened to meet a fellow servant who owed him one hundred denarii. And he seized him by the throat and began to throttle him. Pay what you owe me, he said. His fellow servant fell at his feet and implored him, saying, Give me time and I will pay you. But the other would not agree. On the contrary, he had him thrown into prison Till he should pay the debt. His fellow servants were deeply distressed when they saw what had happened, and they went to their master and reported the whole affair to him. Then the master sent for him. You wicked servant, he said. I cancelled all that debt of yours when you appealed to me. Were you not bound then to have pity on your fellow servant, just as I had pity on you? And in his anger, the master handed him over to the torturers till he should pay all his debt. And that is how my heavenly Father will deal with you unless you each forgive your brother from your heart. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. In this parish, as well as in other parishes, there is this regular occurrence. There will be individuals wandering into the premises and asking for money. If they are asking for money in order to have some food for the day, then we are obligated to help them. And that is our Christian duty. And we will help them in their sustenance for a day or two, 
And we would also see if the Ministry of the Poor or St. Vincent de Paul can give them further assistance. But more often than not, there are people who come to ask for money and they say it is for their rent or their medical bills or utility bills. And they are asking for at least 100 ringgit or even more. <clears throat> and they will make promises to repay it back as soon as they have the money. And in fact, they are asking for a loan, which of course the church is unable to do so. But on a personal level, we have the experience of people like family members, relatives, colleagues and friends coming to us with a sob story and begging us to lend them some money for an urgent need. And the amount that they are asking is for like a few hundred dollars or maybe a few thousand dollars. And we also have the experience of being soft-hearted and we lend a few hundred or a few thousand dollars, our hard-earned money. And we also have the experience that when we ask for money back, we only get empty promises and excuses. And so those who borrowed money from us and have not repaid us, we will always remember them. So if you want people to remember you, just borrow money and don't return it. And then they will certainly remember us always, although not for a good reason. So my dear friends, in the Gospel, Jesus told a parable that we can immediately understand, especially if we had lent money, lent people some money and they have not returned it to us. What the servant owed the king 10,000 talents was an enormous amount and impossible for the servant to repay it. The servant pleaded with the king, Give me time and I will pay back the whole sum. And we too have heard this from those who borrowed money from us. Give me some time and I will repay you. And we wait and we wait and we wait. And so in the parable, the king had pity on that servant and wrote off and that enormous debt. But the reality for us is that it is so difficult to write off a debt, especially if it is a large sum of money. It is like a knife that is stuck in our hearts. But the Gospel parable uses the image, imagery of a monetary debt to point to a spiritual debt. And when others do wrong to us, how willing are we to forgive, especially when they don't seem to deserve it? Let me illustrate further. There's this book, The Sunflower, written by a Nazi Holocaust survivor, Simon Wiesenthal. His pain was extremely intense. Eighty-five members of his family died in the concentration camps. And so in his book, he tells of this story that one day, when he was in the concentration camp, a nurse came and told him to follow her. He was led to a makeshift hospital and into a very small room, which had a single bed, and lying on the bed was a person almost completely wrapped in bandages. <clears throat> and so it was obvious that this person was about to die soon. Simon was left alone with this person, and then the dying person began to speak. And he told his story. He was a young man, 21 years old, a member of the dreaded SS troops, the Nazi army. He had been raised a Catholic but was swayed over to the Nazis and he joined the elite SS troops. When he was in the eastern zone, he was given the assignment to deal with the Jews in the zone, which actually meant killing them by any means. And so this incident troubled the young SS soldier as his early faith formation rebelled against what he did. He grew callous and was distracted, and during a battle, he was wounded to this to state. And so one of the things that were on his mind was that above all, he wanted forgiveness from a Jew. And so it happened that the nurse called in Simon Wiesenthal and there he was, listening to the young man's story and heard his plea. The young man said 
that he was not born a murderer and he didn't want to die a murderer. And he begged Simon on behalf of his people for forgiveness. Simon Wiesenthal says in his book that the only response he could give was to get up and leave the room without saying a word, without granting forgiveness. And he wrote that much later on, his non-response began to trouble him. Should he have granted forgiveness to that dying young man? He could think of many reasons not to, but he still cannot come to terms with his non-response to the pleading of the dying man. And so he concluded the story by asking the readers to put themselves into his shoes and ask themselves the question, what would I have done? My dear friends, when people owe us money and they don't pay up, or when they won't pay up, it is painful. And whenever we think about it, the knife of resentment and anger twists in our hearts and it becomes more and more difficult to forgive them. But when others do wrong to us, it can be more painful because the knife goes round and round in our hearts, making a big hole in our hearts and all kindness and compassion are drained away. And so the antagonist could be an abusive parent, an unfaithful spouse, a scheming sibling, a backstabbing colleague, or even a gossip-mongering parishioner. The hurt and the pain may not be so intense as that of Simon Wiesenthal's, but still it is a twisting, cutting pain that hurts the heart and makes it so difficult to forgive. But the first reading reminds us of this. Resentment and anger, these are foul things, and both are found in the sinner. Forgive your neighbor the hurt he does you, and when you pray, your sins will be forgiven. So Jesus said likewise in the Gospel, forgive each other from your heart, which makes us look at the other side of the coin. Have we been like that dying young soldier who took the wrong path and was callous and did all the wrong things? Of course, we can be obstinate and rationalize away our guilt, but one day we will have, have to come face to face with our sins and then it will be our turn to plead for forgiveness. And for this, the first reading has this profound teaching. Remember the last things and stop hating. Remember dissolution and death and live by the commandments. Remember the commandments and do not bear your neighbor ill will. Remember the covenant of the Most High and overlook the offense. Yes, my dear friends, let us remember that the gospel is about forgiveness. And just as Jesus forgives his enemies, we too must forgive others. Just as Jesus forgives our sins, are also forgiven. And as we remember the last things, let us stop hating and start forgiving. And as we forgive those who trespass against us, the Lord will also forgive us of our trespasses. And so as we celebrate this Eucharist, let us pray for that grace to choose one person whom we have hated so much that we have really left the person out and choose this day to forgive that person and renew our lives as we receive Jesus in the Eucharist, that we may truly forgive and truly live in peace with Jesus in our hearts. We pray for this grace during this Mass. Let us now stand and firmly profess our faith in God. I believe in one God. The Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages. God from God, light from light, true God from true God. 
begotten and not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made, first man and for our salvation. He came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit he was incarnate of the Virgin Mary, and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church, I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. As children of God, let us show humility through practice of forgiveness to our fellow brothers and sisters. We exalt God and devote ourselves entirely to Him as we pray. The response is, O Lord, You alone are our God. That our Holy Father, Pope Francis, bishops, priests, and religious will continue to be instrumental to the growth of the Church so that more people will extend God's goodness to their fellow brothers and sisters through their preaching. We pray to the Lord. O oh Lord, you alone are our God. That God, in His mercy, will heal our country together with the world of the COVID-19 pandemic. We pray to the Lord. O oh Lord, you alone are our God that those suffering the backlash from this pandemic, the affected families, the frontliners, the jobless, and those who have no one to turn to will find hope and healing in our merciful Lord Jesus. We pray to the Lord. O oh Lord, you alone are our God. That all over the world, God will guide his helpers towards locating the homeless, the migrants, and disadvantaged to enable them to experience the goodness and blessings of the Lord. We pray to the Lord, O oh Lord, Lord, you alone are our God, that all of us will do our part to preserve our planet and respect equally all of God's creations. We pray to the Lord, O oh Lord, Lord, you alone are our God, that the Lord in His mercy will hear and answer all the prayers displayed on our wall of prayer. We pray to the Lord. O oh Lord, you alone are our God. That as God's chosen people, we learn to forgive completely without holding any grudges so that we too can be a Jesus to others. We pray to the Lord. O oh Lord, you alone are our God that our merciful Lord will hear us as we now pray in silence for our personal intentions. We pray to the Lord. O oh Lord, you alone are our God. We thank you for your eternal love for us, Almighty God, and pray for the grace to submit ourselves entirely to you. Grant us the strength to always exemplify good deeds in our services to you and relationship with others. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen.
Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Thanks to your goodness is bread we offer, fruit of the earth, work of our hands. It will become the bread of life. Blessed be God. Blessed be God. Blessed be God forever. Amen. Blessed be God. Blessed be God. Blessed be God forever. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Thanks to your goodness is wine we offer, fruit of the vine, work of our hands. It will become the cup of joy. Blessed be God, blessed be God, blessed be God forever. Amen. Blessed be God, blessed be God. Blessed be God forever. Amen. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and good of all his holy church. Look with favor on our supplications, O Lord, and in your kindness accept these, your servants' offerings, that what each has offered to the honor of your name may serve the salvation of all. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For by his birth he brought renewal to humanity's fallen state, and by his suffering cancelled out our sins. By his rising from the dead he has opened the way to eternal life, and by ascending to you, O Father, he has unlocked the gates of heaven. And so in the company of angels and saints we sing the hymn of your praise, as without end we acclaim. Holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, this gifts we pray by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dew fall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which shall be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me.
the mystery of faith Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Sebastian, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy, welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, we Saints Faustina and John Paul II, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. As we pray the Lord's Prayer, we pray that may forgive one another of our sins, as we dare to say. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom and the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who say to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your Church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will. Holy Friend, reign for ever and ever. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Lamb of God, you, you take, take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. This is Jesus who forgave his enemies while dying on the cross. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. How precious is your mercy, O God! The children of men seek shelter in the shadow of your wings.
there will be a second collection for Holy Land. This is a collection taken up worldwide every year by the Catholic Church to help maintain the holy Christian sites in Israel. Please give Janice earnestly. Thank you. Let us pray. May the working of this heavenly gift, O Lord, we pray, take possession of our minds and bodies so that its effects and not our own desires may always prevail in us. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated for some announcement. Today, after Mass, we begin the RCIA Journey 7 at 10.30 at the RCIA classrooms. So those who are interested to know about the faith or to embrace the Catholic faith, you can join with the RCIA classes at 10.30 a.m. every Sunday um, at the third floor classrooms. This is open for all the four languages, so do come uh, and invite your spouses or your friends who wish to embrace the Catholic faith. As you know, we have opened up the masses now more with the relaxation of the um, rules by the government. And I've opened up for all the people, um, whatever age you may be, um, to come for any of the masses. No need to follow the BCs or the zones or the three masses is free. You can just come uh, and participate. However, you still need to follow the SOP strictly. Um, you have to scan the QR code, My Sajatra and also scan the temperature. If you do not have the app of My Sajatra, then you write down in the book your name and contact number. And so the onus is on you now. There's nobody going to be there checking whether you write or don't write. But if the authorities happen to come by and they were to check, then it is up to you already. It's not about the church. It is now you. You take the personal responsibility when you come for Mass to do the necessary things, just as how you do them at uh, the places that you go to, whether it's a uh, um, food court or, or shopping complex or whatever it can be. And so do follow um, this SOP strictly and it's uh, compulsory for you to do so. Um, and do come early for Mass, not coming rushing at the last minute. The gates won't be locked. But nevertheless, I encourage you to come early. If you come late, the whole parish will know because when you scan, the beep sound can be heard until here. So everybody will know that you are coming late for Mass. So do come early for Mass and make the necessary preparation to participate at the Eucharist. Also, you'll find the daily Masses also is open for all. Um, the Masses are at 7 a.m. And these are all temporary times until things become better. Then we'll go back to the normal timing where it's easier for you to go to work and so on. So the Mass timings is still at 7 a.m. And you can come into the main door um, the, the scanners will be there together with the book and for you to scan at every mass that you come. 
for the Sunday masses, the two side doors are open and also um, the side door on my right. So you can use these doors to come in. Next week, Sunday, we use, Sunday morning, we celebrate the first Holy Communion. And so I invite you to pray for these children as they prepare to receive first Holy Communion. And at 11.30 Mass, we will have Migrant Sunday celebration. So um, do inform others and ask them to join in this celebration. The live streaming of Masses will continue as usual for the daily Masses at 7 a.m. and on Sunday at the 9 a.m. Masses. And so for the rest of the announcements, you can refer to the bulletin. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks be to God. Have a blessed week. Same to you, Father.